Hello all. Sorry it's been a while since the last update, but something bad happened to the boat the second time we took it out to the lake, as you'll find out in this video. The plan for the day was simple. You arrange tests and attempts to get to the end of Saguaro Lake, i.e. the dam of Canyon Lake, uh, which is about 7.5 miles away from the marina. We got to the dam successfully and uneventfully with an average speed of 6 miles an hour. However, on the way back, the worst happened. A terrible screeching sound started from the engine bay, and we lost all thrust from the back of the jet. Here's a video filmed after getting home that depicts the sound, because once again, I'm a terrible YouTuber, and I did not film the sound while we were there at the lake. I swam under the boat, and found no obstructions in the impeller, and the motor was turning just fine. So the next logical explanation was the coupler between the motor and the impeller shaft. Uh, while we were at the lake, I tried to film the coupler using my phone to see what happened. The film was pretty bad, it didn't really work, and I couldn't see what happened. So it came to flagging down somebody to get a tow. Luckily, the only person that was that far off the lake was nice enough to give us a ride. Unfortunately, about two miles into the ride, they decided to just kind of throw us the rope back and leave us where there were some other boats. So we had to solicit a second tow to get back was quite annoying. Uh, the second boat was a bit louder, as you can hear in this video, uh, but we were very thankful that they took us all the way back to the marina and we were able to get the boat on the trailer. And our second boat tow of the day. Boat tow number two. See my yeah, on the lap. trailer wheel did come off. The trailer <laughs> wheels, We still have to ride home. After we got home, I was able to remove the motor to see what happened. So I'll let myself talk about exactly what I found when I got in there. You can see the top half of them are in shape, but the bottom half are completely shaved off. So no wonder it broke. And then, just to top it off, we also fit this one. So that's great. Nothing wrong with the gear mechanism. It's still spinning down there. See the aftermath all around it. So I guess I'm gonna have to have this pulled out and have a new end put on it. It sucks a lot. Well, there's a motor. Here's my jury rigged puller so I can rip it out. Other half's in fine Kate state. Actual C. Still got the little guy in there. Bearing is doing great. Nothing wrong there. Just uh just this guy shredded. It's lovely. Oh, well, we might be down for a couple months. Looks like to get that drive shaft out, I'm gonna have to pull everything. Great. That's exciting. And you can see how I covered up those wires. I just used some gloves, seemed effective. So that's great. Guess I gotta redesign. Well, here's to not having a boat for a little while. Needless to say, it's been horribly hot in Phoenix all summer, and this happened in May, so I have not fixed the shaft yet. Uh, however, I did get some useful stats from this trip, which is nice. After charging the boat, I was able to determine that we went 8.5 miles total before the boat broke, and we used about 17.5 kilowatts, going an average of 6 miles an hour, with like a couple full speed attempts in there that might have used a little more. So, for efficiency data, uh, at the 6 mile an hour speed, we were using two kilowatts of battery charge per mile. So the current battery pack of 38 kilowatts can go about 19 miles with a full charge. And if once I add those extra packs to get the battery pack up to 46 kilowatt hours total, uh, we'll be able to go about 23 miles, which is pretty good for a day of cruising, I think. 
Time will tell if the planing data will result in a different range, but according to the boat test tables that I've showed you before and some other videos, uh, going 6 miles an hour at 2000 RPMs is roughly equivalent in energy usage uh, on the gas boat going about 25 mile, miles an hour while planing. So it looks like we'll get about 20 miles of planing off the battery when it's 46 kilowatts. So that's pretty good. So uh, assuming that all these tables are correct, that's 20 miles of range, which is a pretty good day on the lake. I also included a screenshot of the round trip energy usage from my house to Swallow Lake and back from the Tesla that was towing the boat. This is a Model Y that we towed the boat with. So we were getting 600 watt hours per mile, which is pretty bad compared to the normal 250 watt hours per mile that the car gets. Tank of energy in the Tesla, we would get about 125 miles of range towing the boat in the worst case. Uh, so that, that's not too bad, it's enough to get to most of the local lakes around here, but it's going to be a pain if you're going on the freeway. Uh, with our electricity prices, that equates to about $3.68 to go to Swallow Lake and back, which is pretty cool. My old F-150, when we towed the boat, would get 12 miles per gallon, and at $3 a gallon, that would actually cost about $19 in gas. So the savings are pretty excellent towing with the Tesla, even though it can't quite go as far, uh, but I'm pretty happy with that. I much prefer $4 over $20 to just get to the lake, so that's cool. That's all for now. I'm currently working on fixing the boat and have some more videos in the pipeline about how the batteries are made, so stay tuned. As it gets cooler here, I will hopefully have some more updates. As always, thanks for watching.